Hi, my name is Troy Basrab and I'm a market development specialist with Bayer Crop Science. I'm here today to talk to you about Fusarium head blight and the situation that we have in Western Canada and how we can use fungicides to mitigate this disease. Over the next little bit, we'll talk about what happened with Fusarium in the summer of 2014 in the Western Prairies. We'll also talk on the genetic resistance that's in the wheat varieties out there, as well as some of the dynamics that happen in crop with regards to how it affects the disease. We'll talk about check strips, we'll talk about the fungicides available for use, and lastly, we'll touch on the application parameters that are probably most important for applying fungicides to go after Fusarium head blight. Before we talk about 2014, let's take a quick look back and see what happened over the last couple of years. According to the Canadian Grain Commission, this is the levels of Fusarium damage incidence that was in the prairies in the summer of 2011. And you can see in some districts, like in southwestern Manitoba, that was where we were seeing some of the highest incidences reported. As we rolled into 2012, we saw a massive increase in the amount of fusarium across the prairies, especially again in western Manitoba, but also invading a lot of areas in uh, Saskatchewan as well too, and also seeing some increased levels in Alberta. Looking at 2013, that trend continued. We were still seeing lots of fusarium showing up in pretty much all districts across western Canada, which basically set the tone for what we saw in 2014. According to the Canadian Grain Commission, the amount of downgrading that we have seen in grain samples due to fusarium damage has been on an increase over the last 10 years to the point where this is becoming a very, very serious problem, not only in kind of some of the traditional fusarium areas like Manitoba, but also in Saskatchewan and Alberta. And as we can see here in some preliminary numbers from the Canadian Grain Commission, we are once again seeing a very, very high incidence of fusarium being reported right across the prairies, right from western regions of Manitoba all the way through Saskatchewan and through Alberta as well. And even when we look at the severity of those samples in terms of the percent FDKs that we have in the samples, we are again seeing some hot spots across the prairies. So in looking back over 2014 over the previous couple of years, 2014 will likely be known as a high fusarium head blight year. We have seen that inoculum is prairie wide in all regions and everyone should be bracing for it. And we've saw significant downgrading in all crops and samples submitted to labs all across the West are reporting high levels of fusarium. So now let's look at the genetic resistance of some of the crops and some of the crop dynamics that we have going on with us. This is some data obtained from the Canadian Grain Commission again looking at the different wheat types that are available in the prairies and looking at the numbers of varieties broken out by resistance types, i.e varieties that are susceptible to fusarium to moderately susceptible, intermediate, and moderately resistant. And as you can see in the graph to the left, there's a fairly good split amongst the genetic differences in, in resistance types between these varieties. The chart on the right looks at the acreage of these varieties. And as you can see, over three quarters of the acreage in Western Canada is either rated susceptible or moderately susceptible to fusarium head blight. And basically a quarter of the market will be listed as an intermediate or moderately resistant to fusarium head blight. When you break it out by individual regions, we see some differences. And when you look at specifically at Alberta, for example, over 90% of the acreage of wheat in Alberta is either susceptible or moderately susceptible to fusarium head blight. When you get into Saskatchewan, the numbers change a little bit, but as we see a little bit more of the intermediate and moderately resistant varieties grown, and then when we look at Manitoba, this is where we see the greatest adoption of genetics that are, you know, fall into the intermediate or moderately resistant category. So as you can see, there is some difference amongst the varieties that are grown in Western Canada, but it still remains that over three quarters of the acreage is either susceptible or moderately susceptible. And if we start to look at managing fusarium head blight from a varietal genetic standpoint, we need to start thinking about migrating into genetics that are listed either intermediate, moderately resistant, or even resistant. In starting to think about managing fusarium head blight, think of driving your car or your truck in, in the winter. And we know that winter will bring about slippery driving conditions. It's just a matter of whether the, whether the weather will give us that. And that's much like fusarium on the prairies. It's going to be a given that it's going to be rearing itself somewhere on the prairies if the conditions do develop. Now think of your car with bald tires and consider that as having a bad fusarium rating on a wheat genetics. So a car with bad tires, bald tires, this will give you very poor driving performance on these roads. Now think of your car when you up the ratings on your tires, like switching to a winter tire, for example. That's going to increase your rating and much like moving from a moderately susceptible to a moderately resistant wheat variety. So much like adding four-wheel drive on top of good winter tires is going to give you the best winter driving possible 
adding a fungicide on top of wheat genetics with good fusarium resistance is going to be your best strategy possible for managing fusarium head blight. One of the tough challenges though with applying fungicides onto your crop is staging for the crop. And this is where it's going to get really, really tough for a grower to, to apply fungicides on because it, quite frankly, it is impossible to get every single wheat head in your crop to flower at exactly the same time so that you can time your fungicide really effectively. There's numerous things that go on within the crop in terms of uh, its growth habits that make it really challenging for timing fungicides. The ultimate goal is to try and apply fungicide to as consistent amount of crop as what you can. But as that crop grows and the heads emerge out of the boot, therein lies the challenge. And we've seen in cases where you get a vast majority of your heads will come out at the same time and, and grow similar, and it's easy to time those. However, we do see heads emerge later. We do see heads emerge and flower at different times to the point that even a little bit further on, we can see some vast differences in terms of when the first heads emerge and flower to when the last heads from the tillers emerge and flower as well. And this is where some of the challenges lie. We get one shot to apply a fungicide. And obviously we want to try and coat the heads, or as many heads as what we can. But when we ha start having tillers emerge, you know, one week, two weeks afterwards and flower uh, later as well too, those subsequent heads that are, don't get hit by the fungicide are available for infection by fusarium. So this is where it becomes challenging to try and manage application parameters. When do you apply it? How many heads do you hit? Which ones are left behind that are available for infection? One of the things that growers are doing to try and manage this is to try and get a lot more consistency throughout their crop via cultural or growing habits. For example, higher seeding rates. And what that's going to do is going to allow a higher plant stand population in your field so then you tend to see more main heads that will be more consistent staging and less tillers that are going to be at variable staging as well. So especially as we start to see undulations and variations in the land, higher seeding rates in general are going to provide a more consistent crop which allows a lot easier targeting of a fungicide application. We always recommend the growers leave a check strip in their field because ultimately this is the true reference point and is the only way to really benchmark the performance of a fungicide. This allows both a visual and a calculated determination in terms of the fungicide performance and the determination of your return on investment. These are very, very easy to establish or to set up in your field and it can be something as small as turning your boom off for 20 feet and leaving a small area for a visual representation or leaving say one full boom width right down the field that allows you to take a, an untreated area to yield. Again, these are absolutely crucial and gives you a spot in the field to look at where the fungicide was and where the fungicide wasn't so that you can do a complete evaluation of the performance of the fungicide. So let's look at the different fungicide options that growers have on the prairies today. Currently right now, there are 10 products on the market that have product label claims of activity on Fusarium head blight. Most of these products fall into the triazole chemistry of fungicides as being the most active. However, none of these products will list official full control on their label. All label claims are for suppression only. Now the performance of these different products will vary. Some products will perform better than others. I encourage you to visit itpaystospray.ca so you can see firsthand for yourself the difference in fungicide performance and their effects on Fusarium head blight. Over the last seven years, Bayer Crop Science has been running a field scale strip trial program to assess the performance of fungicides on grain yield and quality. One of the things that we looked at in our strip trial program was the effect of fungicide over top of weak and strong genetics to Fusarium head blight. Weak genetics are varieties that would have either a susceptible or a moderately susceptible rating to Fusarium head blight versus strong genetics would be either an intermediate or an MR or an R rating to Fusarium head blight. And as you can see from the bars on the left, obviously putting a fungicide over top of some weak genetics is providing a yield and quality response to these fungicides. However, we are still seeing that even with stronger genetics or genetics that have stronger resistance packages to Fusarium head blight, we are still seeing that fungicides are still providing value and still providing a yield response and quality response. Rest assured, all products with label claims of activity on Fusarium head blight will have some effect on mitigating the disease. All companies must follow stringent PMRA guidelines in order to register these products and to submit claims on their product label. You can be assured that with proper application and timing, these products will have an effect at reducing the impact of Fusarium head blight. However, no fungicide should be considered as the silver bullet to end all or rid the crop 100% of Fusarium head blight. Expect that you can still potentially see some in the field. However, the amount of Fusarium head blight reduction by a fungicide should be done with proper application and benchmarked by a check strip. 
So applying fungicide onto a wheat head is not an easy task. And the first thing we have to do is we have to think about applying fungicides onto wheat head as being different than a herbicide application because you're going after a vertical cylindrical target like this instead of a horizontal leafy surface uh, like you would at herbicide time. So just dropping the product into the sprayer and, and fogging it over the crop is not enough. And there's a couple parameters that we have to think of. First is we have to get that product to land on that head. And the other thing is we have to get enough product on top of the head to ensure that we've got enough active ingredient on there for the fungicide to do its job. The big thing with applying fungicides on wheat head is that we have to get consistent coverage across the head. And that goes right from top to bottom, from side to side, from back to front. And therein lies the challenge, is trying to get a good, even, consistent coverage on that wheat head. Not doing a good job at any one of these points is going to allow an area on that wheat head which allows fusarium infection subsequently down the line. Now, good head coverage is not an easy task to accomplish. Even the new nozzles can still be used incorrectly. Therefore, proper nozzle selection is absolutely critical. Um, generally, what we've seen is that the, the nozzle orientations that have the forward to backward orientation is going to give you the, a good first step in trying to get uh, coverage on that head. However, ensuring we have proper water volumes is also really critical. 10 gallons is usually the absolute minimum we will go with. However, we have seen that moving up to 15 gallons is going to allow a better job, a better opportunity to cover that wheat head. Now, once you have that nozzle and that water volume, you've got to make sure you adjust your nozzle size, your speed, pressure, uh, et cetera, all those uh, application parameters so that you are getting that optimal droplet size for landing on that wheat head. For example, a medium to coarse droplet is the best size that we recommend. As you get into the extra coarse uh, or very coarse droplet sizes, we tend to see that maybe not as conducive to good coverage. Or also, on the other side of the equation, where we have a real fine droplet size, that's where we tend to see that wind can move those droplets around and maybe not allow them to land on that uh, wheat head. One of the things we also want to do is we want to make sure that we're keeping tight to the canopy. And we've seen that as that spray boom moves further and further away from those wheat heads, we tend to see a lot more inconsistencies in the coverage on that wheat head. Spraying in windy conditions, watch your sprayer speeds, all those other application parameters come into place. So we've got to make sure that we're doing our due diligence. Spraying properly, taking your time, understanding your nozzle and the corresponding droplet size with your other application parameters will ultimately provide you with the best product performance possible. So the question has come up is, can a fungicide be accidentally applied improperly? And this was a little pet project of mine over the last year to, to specifically look at this. So one of the things I did was in my backyard with my plot sprayer, actually went out and tried looking at different nozzle configurations with different water volumes, different pressures, different speeds, different heights, to try and see if there is a difference between kind of optimal application or uh, an application parameter that would result in less performance uh, of the nozzle or the fungicide at the end of the day. So I looked at six different nozzle configurations that would be very commonly used in Western Canada, ranging from the single nozzle with a, with a vertical orientation to some of the forward-backward orientations, like a 60-degree forward-backward or a 90-degree, to even looking at some of the newer nozzle configurations that have a 30-degree forward and a 70-degree backward inclination. And just to try and see, are there differences when you manipulate some application parameters, how they compare with coverage on the head. A couple of trends that we saw with, that were very consistent was that we were seeing that 15 gallons per acre got us better coverage than 10 gallons per acre. Also, the further we got away from the wheat head in terms of height, also we saw a big drop in coverage on the wheat head as well too, and that the tighter that we stayed to the wheat head allowed us to get better coverage. So what this means is that no matter which nozzle you have on your sprayer, there are lots of other application parameters that have to be taken into consideration to ensure that we get optimal coverage across the head. And as we start to increase speed, decrease water volume, increase droplet size, we can see massive differences using the same nozzle in terms of the coverage that we get on the head. So in summary, getting good consistent coverage of the head is not an easy feat. And even the new technologies that are out on the, on the prairies can be used incorrectly. So what we want to make sure that we're doing is we're using proper nozzles or proper nozzle selection, a forward backward inclination is best. Ensure we have good water volumes, 10 is good, 15 is better. Make sure that we adjust our nozzle size with speed and pressure to ensure optimal droplet size and we're targeting that medium to coarse droplet size. 
And the last thing we want to do is make sure that we're keeping tight to the canopy, ideally 12 to 15 inches off the head of the crop. Take your time. The more diligent you are, the better job you will do in covering the head and the better performance you will get out of your fungicide. So in closing, there's lots of different strategies to help a grower manage fusarium head blight more effectively. The first thing that we have to do is monitor the pathogen in the environment and basically prepare for the infection. There are lots of varieties out in the marketplace, but in order to manage fusarium head blight, using varieties with better disease resistance packages is a good first step. Look to varieties that have an intermediate or a moderately resistant fusarium resistance package. Also look at other cultural methods to control crop rotation, tillage, burying stubble, higher seeding rates to allow better optimal uh, fungicide application. A lot of these other methods, again, in conjunction, will help you to mitigate. Use top performing fungicides. There's lots of products out there. They differ in performance. Look to some of the data out there to ensure that you are getting a top performing fungicide. Leave a check strip for your reference. This is the way that you can benchmark how good the fungicide worked for you and also allows you to see the level of reduction of fusarium head blight in firsthand in your field. And lastly, be diligent when applying fungicides. Be mindful of coverage, do a good job the first time and get the most value out of your fungicide. For more information, please visit itpaystospray.ca.